Nearly 40% of the millions of homeless in the United States are veterans. When the count of recent veterans that had committed suicide hit 30,000 back in 28, the US government stopped counting. This week, American war veterans in Los Angeles await a court decision that would return the veterans' national home to them. The land had been stolen from them by gangsters and politicians, two groups most Americans now know are one and the same. However, they fear the judges under pressure from powerful anti-veteran groups now clearly identified as Israeli-based. American war veterans have been targeted. They've known it for years, but it wasn't until they were named terrorists by Department of Homeland Security Secretary Janet Napolitano and anti-Semites by Abe Foxman's Anti-Defamation League that they knew who was out to get them. A powerful organization, organized crime figures, APAC, the ADL, then JDL, aided by Senators Feinstein and Boxer, and Representatives Waxman and Pelosi, have declared war on America's homeless veterans. Aiding them are phony non-profit organizations, the Veterans Park Conservancy and Brentwood Homeowners Association, multimillionaires, Israeli citizens, stealing from homeless veterans, organizing smear campaigns, hiring thugs, police and military to threaten and intimidate veterans, many well into their 80s. But why? Veterans control billions in land, are served by one of the world's largest hospital systems and supposedly receive endless billions in aid programs which have not just been increasingly privatized but increasingly targeted by organized crime. Veterans are an easy target and laws that allowed Congress to be taken over by banksters, drug cartels and human traffickers have empowered criminal elements among America's friends of Israel to prey on damaged and disenfranchised war heroes. Service organizations tasked with protecting veterans have made it even easier as they had begun the process long before taking everything in sight and waving the flag to cover their crimes. Now, the real professionals have taken over. Back during the 19th century, nearly 400 acres of worthless land was donated as a home for war veterans. That land is now worth $4 billion. The veterans group, the Old Guard, that has been demonstrating for nearly 300 consecutive weeks, never knew who their real enemies were. Police came to arrest them, war heroes with an average age of over 70. The courts ruled that the police had violated the law. Aging veterans had their phones tapped, their computers hacked and were even followed by members of special police units working for the Department of Veterans Affairs, some dressed as groundskeepers, photographed leaning on shovels while not so casually talking into microphones hidden in their sleeves and tapping their earpieces. It would have been funny if it weren't also criminal. Military police came, filmed, assaulting the aging wheelchair-bound vets, but police and the courts would do nothing. How do you tell the Israel lobby from the Mafia? You can't. Then, it happened. The old guard were called anti-Semites by the ADL. The ADL called them Nazi extremists. A local Jewish paper claimed the group was terrorists, citing that veteran protesters are likely to bring machine guns and start killing people in the streets. There is a problem with this. Some of the vets are Jewish. Their supporters are Jewish. Their lawyers from the ACLU are all Jewish. What makes them anti-Semites is that they are threatening a racket that is spreading across America, billions of dollars worth of land, some designated for veterans, some for parks, some for hospitals or wildlife, all being given to billionaire developers. Every one of these developers are Israeli citizens. All have long-time ties to the Mayor Lansky Murder Incorporated gang that was the real Mafia. 
They are alive and well today. Many safely settled in Israel, others still in America. This same organization, the one at war with America's veterans, the old guard and the veterans today, put Bush in office, made billions when the World Trade Center was demolished on 9 -1 -1, made trillions during the bailouts and market crash and, of course, started the Iraq and Afghan wars and are manipulating the slaughter in Syria and in Egypt. Nearly 40% of the millions of homeless in the United States are veterans. When the count of recent veterans that had committed suicide hit 30,000 back in 28, the US government stopped counting. Over 10,000 veterans of Operation Desert Storm have died of a mysterious disease called Persian Gulf War Syndrome. Well documented, but denied. Few Americans know or care that by 1985, 50,000 Vietnam veterans had died of Agent Orange poisoning. By 2005, over 1 million Vietnam veterans had died of suicide or unknown causes, making the toll from that war greater than the combined losses of all other wars combined, including two world wars, the Civil War, and even Korea. The methods used against American veterans in California and across the U.S. deeply parallels Israel's land grabs that have disposed of millions of Palestinians. However, American veterans don't even have refugee camps to go to, no organization to represent them, and when and if they speak up, they are quickly disappeared, prison, accidents, or untimely suicides. Veterans have been officially classified as terrorists by the Department of Homeland Security. From the Washington Times, Homeland Security Secretary Janet Napolitano said Wednesday that she was briefed before the release of a controversial intelligence assessment and that she stands by the report which lists returning veterans among terrorist risks to the U.S. The document on right-wing extremism sent last week by this department's Office of Intelligence and Analysis is one in an ongoing series of assessments to provide situational awareness to state, local and tribal law enforcement agencies on the phenomenon and trends of violent radicalization in the United States, Ms. Napolitano said in her statement. Let me be very clear. We monitor the risks of violent extremism taking root here in the United States. We don't have the luxury of focusing our efforts on one group. We must protect the country from terrorism, whether foreign or homegrown, and regardless of the ideology that motivates its violence, Ms. Napolitano said. We are on the lookout for criminal and terrorist activity, but we do not, nor will we ever monitor ideology or political beliefs. We take seriously our responsibility to protect the civil rights and liberties of the American people, including subjecting our activities to rigorous oversight from numerous internal and external sources. Each week for nearly six years, veterans from the three wars have stood against the powerful West Side political machine of Henry Waxman, and the millionaire Israeli-Americans of the Brentwood Homeowners Association. America's veteran's home was seized, given to the rich who built a private school, a place for their pets to befoul, and a million-dollar rose garden, all on land held sacred for America's homeless heroes. A multi-million dollar fence and militarized police force guarantees that the 20,000 local homeless veterans will never set foot on the home they alone own. The rich hold parties there, movie premieres, fundraisers for gay and lesbian charities, all the while the veterans who own the land and have proven it in court sleep on the sidewalks, in the bushes, sometimes too often to be hauled away, dead of unknown causes. The names. Think Waxman, Foxman, Netanyahu, Pelosi, Boxer, Biter, 
Broad, Millman, Measel, Frank, and especially John McCain. Few outside the U.S. know how American veterans suffer. After Vietnam, Senator John McCain, according to Colonels Ted Guy, Earl Harper, and Jim Hank, worked tirelessly to make sure none of the hundreds of POWs held after the end of the war were repatriated. Hank, former POW recovery officer in Thailand, tells of reports of POW sightings being suppressed and the American people being lied to under the veil of operational secrecy. Today, nearly a million veterans await claims processing, said to be as long as 18 months. In truth, processing means blanket denials with real claims taking up to 25 years or more to process. Many Vietnam veterans are only now getting claims processed for illnesses and injuries dating from the 1960s and 70s. Veterans call it deny, deny, deny until they die. This is the rule, not the exception. Veterans didn't know. They know now.